Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about something spicy, uh, criticism of Starship. So let's dive deep into it. Now, what exactly is Starship? Be mindful, the design has not completed yet, so it's not in design freeze. So what exactly we are talking about? We are talking about here the one of the most ambitious craft ever. Like the amount of things this puppy has to do, it's uh, closer to magic. Because it's real. Let's get started. First stage, again, world's biggest first stage there is, the most oomph, the most power there is. It has to land. Okay, uh, the fact that we are talking about landing it right now, there is no competition and the fact that it has to land without legs. Now you're like, why the heck they are not putting legs there? A, legs are heavy. B, legs are only useful during landing, meaning uh, adding legs removes tonnage from the payload. So you want to make sure that you do not have legs if you can avoid it. Like again, they are also considering removing four grid fins to three grid fins. So again, that will still give you all the controls, but you will simplify the manufacturing and uh, all that stuff. and. Uh, you'll have less uh, basically baggage so to say so there is a balance because here's really if if i asked you to make the mechazilla heavier it's not that big of a penalty but if you have to make the booster even a few kilograms heavier it reaches a point where it's non-viable for that reason they have to make it as light as possible that's just the first stage then we come to the second stage. This puppy has to do re-entry, landing and recovery. Meaning not only it has to re-enter the atmosphere, it has to actually land while going like this bush. And then it has to be recoverable. Meaning it should not be like, okay, like space shuttle where it just landed and then they're like, okay, now let's refurbish the hell out of it. Basically make a brand new, uh, you know, space shuttle. So they have to be all these three things. And while that, that itself is like, whoa, uh, what, they are adding a bit more. They have massive, huge payload to orbit. It is 100 ton to orbit. Now, there is one misconception people have is like, uh, oh, this is not that great for geostationary. Yeah, there is a bypass to that. If you have 100 ton to orbit, let's say you want to launch a heavy satellite, like GG heavy satellite. Let's say 10 ton to geostationary. Here's the deal. You have this option. Put a 10 ton satellite, put 80 tons of rocket booster. That's how it was done. That's how Space Shuttle deployed many of the heavy payloads. You can do that. If you have the capacity, volume and uh, tonnage, you do not have the limitations. Like people are talking, like, oh, it can only do uh, low Earth orbit. Yes, it can only do low Earth orbit on its own. You add whatever satellite you are talking about. Be mindful, we are talking about 100 tons. You have a lot of room. And if you are willing to delay it a bit, if you do not need to di like you know directly launch it in two hours, if you are like, okay, what if I do orbit um, uh, raising, you can launch a humongous satellite, a satellite that nobody could even think like let's say 25 ton to Jewish stationary. Nobody would even think that but here you can do that. So if you have 100 ton to low earth orbit, you have all the capacity you need to geostationary or to the moon. All you have to do is add what we call third stage or kick stage. You have to think in through, it's just not, rockets do not just like okay we threw it done. There are options. So this is massive, like flat out, 100 tons is like, nobody even has imagination of this caliber. Let that sink in, nothing even comes close to three zeros, like, you know, three digits, nothing, nothing, it's just like, nope. So this is all so far bonkers, like, what are you doing? Like, if you have told these things to anyone in year 2000, they would have been like, did a rocket equation change or did Earth's gravity became lesser? So, so far, they're pushing it, but they have not broken it, anything. Uh, rapid reusability, yeah, let that be very clear. Basically, they are making an upgraded space shuttle. While space shuttle dream was uh, launching this puppy two times per month, they only managed to do two times a year. They are trying to do rapid reusability target being one day. Now, again, if Elon Musk says one day, let's assume one week. Even if they can pull that off, let's say they can only do 50 launches a year, this is beyond digestible. This is like nothing can digest it, my man. Nobody has the stomach for it. All that now it becomes to the game breaking bug while being cheaper. Yeah, this is why I said this is in terms of raw ambition. There is nothing, nothing that even comes close to the ludicrous nature of this. Like this is true ludicrous. It's not like a little bit better. No, 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 no. This is like we are going from uh, basically before World War One to after World War Two, directly jumping. So this is a humongous jump. So uh, fair criticism is delay. Now, it has been delayed? Yes, absolutely. Now, you may be like, hey, it's a private company. Who cares? No, 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 no. There is a reason for care because it's a national timeline dependent asset, meaning uh, SpaceX or aka Elon Musk went to NASA and it's like, brah, 
you give us money we do artemis for you in this time frame if you delay it you are delaying nasa so it's not just like oh i'm developing it's not like we developed the starship now we are selling it to uh, you know uh, nasa it's like nasa is actually helping them they are paying serious amount of money through artemis contract in order to get it done so there is a serious uh, oops here where it's like if elon timeline keeps happening there is a penalty for that and sometimes could introduce legal penalty and be mindful uh, elon musk is the one who actually fought court case and won so i can guarantee you if there was even a real probability where they can file a court case all other players in the space race they will fire missiles up his ass so there is a serious penalty here it's not just like oh lol delay who cares no a lot of people cares and in terms of national prestige point of view USA could lose the moon race, quote unquote, soft lose, meaning because again, they are like, hey, bro, we achieved it 50 years ago. It's just that when you tried it again, it's like I'm old and tired and it's like, you know, it's a PR nightmare. You do not want to deal with it. You want to be like, oh, China is coming there. Let's put something there. And it's like, welcome China. Let's welcome China to the moon. That's what you want to say. You do not be like, oh, China went there. It's like, ah, that would be embarrassing. Now you were like, does that really matter? Whole space race happened because mine's bigger than yours. Let that be very clear. It matters to humanity. Mine's bigger than yours. Now, that's just on the public front part of things, um, you know, government, public stuff. They also had a private oops where Dear Moon, this puppy was poofed, gone, forgotten. It never existed. Now, this happened. So that's also a question, sir. People say, you know, endurance reliability was like, can you actually do it? So that's the whole point. Now, what are we expecting at this point in time? At best case scenario, I'm expecting payload deployment by 2025. This is again, this is my prediction best case scenario 2025 they are deploying payload now be mindful deploying payload does not mean reusability reusability will come much afterwards because again same thing happened with falcon 9 falcon 9 was a fully functioning rocket before it became fully functional and reusable rocket if you watch my old videos or even uh, spacex's own old broadcast where they are talking about uh, they were like hey we can reuse this puppy five times they were so excited it was like five reuse and then at some point they crossed up threshold of what uh, any space shuttle has done now they are reaching a point where it's like okay now we can push it to 20. So same thing will happen with Starship. Again, Starship has a lot of serious benefit. Again, the wisdom of Falcon 9 is on top of it. So it has some benefit, but still do be warm about it. Be, uh, you know, aware of it. That's like, oh, we did a deployment into the orbit. We might for last two missions could do that. So even if they had deployment, does not mean they will have complete reusability right on the back. It will take time. So 2025 is a payload delivery and then moon and human rating. Now that will take time. Be mindful, making a rocket, you think that is hard? Making a rocket that is human rated? Yeah, that's hard. How hard? ISRO has GSLV Mark III ready, take it and go. We done it, we got this, we solid. Uh, human rating it? Yeah, we have been trying to do that for a few years. It's fundamentally difficult to making, and again, same thing happened with Falcon 9 also. It's like, we got Falcon 9. Let's human rate it. Yeah, that's taking too long. It happens. It's one of those things that it happens. So that translates to my estimate would be 2030 plus human rating. Let that be very clear. Human rating. Uh, again, you could bypass the human rating by like, you know what? Hey, you only put people in it once they are in space. That's a bit more forgiving environment compared to the launch pad environment because you have the biggest boom potential in the launch pad environment. Maybe they can shrink the timeline, but... Uh, this is the reasonable uh, estimate at this point in time. Now, this is all true. Have they been delayed? Yes. Are there penalties to it? Absolutely. Could it uh, spiral out of hand? Undeniably. There is a probability of these things. But, but, let's uh, let's apply some big ass but here. Uh, compared to what? That's the reality of it. Like, they are trying to do bonkers. Like, people could not even imagine things of this caliber. Compare that to SLS. Where is the fuel tank coming from? Is the control C, control V from a space shuttle? Of course, reinforced, reimproved, but the design is already validated and proven. And then you may like, okay, diameter change and all this. Okay, okay, let's give you the freedom of the doubt. Uh, what about the sol uh, solid boosters? Same thing. They're just adding one more segment to it. And that's why it had segment. And it also makes shipping easier. Why delay? Now, what about inches? RS-25 inches. We had it from 70s. You see, delay of SLS is far more what the hell compared to this. This is like, I do not know whether you can pull it off compared to SLS. You are still taking time for this? So, in contrast, like, you know, as they say in the Sherlock Holmes, on balance, there is no competition here. It's like SLS, is like, it's like, bro, what the hell are you doing? Why the heck your launch tower is behind schedule? Let that be very clear. SLS has launch tower behind schedule, not the rocket. Rocket is like, lol. But the launch tower is like, yeah, we do not know how to build this. 
I'm not joking, this actually happened. Look into it. Look into ex Inspector General uh, Officer reports. It's awesome. So that's why I said, yeah, are they delayed? Undeniably. Is there penalty? Yes. Compared to what? All they have to say is like, compared to what? Look, what we are trying to do is exponentially harder to your own agency and there is no competition. And if you do not have competition, your court case starts to become weak. And again, the SpaceX won court case against the Department of Defense simply because they're like, hey, I could do better than you. I could actually do it cheaper than you compared to ULA. And they did it. That's why they got the case. So delay is here, but there is a real world reality of it. It's like, who else are you going to complain it to? Like, so now let's talk about the over budget part of it. Well, uh, why they are over budget? Well, primary because they are hardware rich. Now, hardware rich path does teach you a lot. It does teach you very quickly and does allow exponential growth. But that puppy consumes money like there is no tomorrow. So it's a really seriously expensive pathway that they have chosen. On top of that, they are burning money to make a factory on a design that is not finished. Now, there are two types of factory. One, super optimized, super fine-tuned factory that generally used for automotive industry. And those are like every nut volts are fine-tuned. Benefit, they can mass produce it and cost per unit produced is exponentially lower. But you can't really do that with Starship because the design is not final. They do not know where they need the cranes. They do not know which sort of hinge designs they're gonna use. They do not know where to move the engines. Again, they're figuring things out, but they are still making the factory. Consequence of which is, it's a very risky gamble meaning if the design changes significantly they have to redo a way too much thing again even from outside it may look hey everything is just exactly where it was but it will still require a boatload of money sinking into it so it's a very expensive path it does work it does yield result there is no uh, two way about that part it's just that it's really brutal for your pocket so to say and uh, they already burned through almost most of what NASA has provided for Artemis mission. Again, uh, like assume this much uh, Artemis was, uh, you know, costing to SpaceX and uh, NASA was like, okay, you take this much, they exceeded it. They overshoot it, so to say, meaning they are not uh, in terms of where they should be in development for that amount of money. So it's a very serious issue. And there is a point where government could literally either abandon the project, which does happen. It's like a cost sunk cost fallacy, especially with James Webb telescope created a really bad taste in people's mouth where they might just like, okay, let's not have any other James Webb space telescope, given the fact that puppy is supposed to cost. Uh, the original price was $500 million. Then they revised it to $1 billion. And then it was like, you know, 10 billion dollar it's like bro you cannot keep doing that again and again so there is a very serious risk uh, where spacex will become the very thing that they were claiming ula was that ula was like just keep more money keep more money and uh, again because of defense contract and given the fact that it's like national security asset they are like okay we just bite the bullet here they are becoming very close to exactly the same thing where there's like hey you want artemis pay more so it's a very serious thing on top of that, the grey market money that they are sinking into making these things, it's not free money. While it is not stock directly, uh, you know, like from open stock market, but it's still not free, meaning it's not just like something you take it and you just burn it because it's still, for you and me, it will be like it's a thing that you are watching. But for people who are invested into this, they are like, my 5 million blew up, my 10 billion blew up, you know, not 10 billion. I don't think anyone single individually invested that much, but you get the point. Like there is a point where it's like, hey, dude, one rocket blowing up. Nobody was like, hey, who cares, man? Two, three, four, five. And if they are not as, uh, uh, you know, kind to it as a, you know, common public is, they might be just like, you know what? I could have taken four losses and this is enough. I'm out. Okay. There, it's not free. The gray money is not free. Now, then why people are still uh, not worried about it? Well, the reality is very simple. No one is at the same level. Comparing SpaceX to everything else on the planet, it's a, it's a lol. It's like literally, it's not a viable competition. It's like comparing, uh, you know, what do you have in terms of infrastructure in Antarctica versus like, you know, a megapol megapolis. It's like, it's not comparable. It's like, it's not even in the same wavelength. It's like every country is like, we're going to build a reusable rocket. We're going to build a re reusable second stage, which has enough capacity. If it works what they are expecting it to, it would be like, bro, don't even compare, come close or even try. Like think it this way. It took years to make ISS. This puppy can make bigger, cheaper, better ISS in fewer time, like, you know, in few launches and it would be quicker also and cheaper also. So there is no competition, nothing, no China, no India, no ESA, no uh, JAXA, nothing, nothing even exists. So there is a genuine point where it's like, yeah, this is a very high risk uh, game that they are playing, but the reward is exponentially higher. Be mindful. 
Rocket companies have existed from 1960s, but nobody before SpaceX could even, uh, you know, dare say, we're gonna do reusable. There was some company, X32, if I'm not mistaken, they had like a reusable, but it never went anywhere. They are the only company that went to orbit and still had an actual reusable booster. So now when they are saying it, people are like, okay, okay, I see you, because you have delivered what nobody thought was viable. They already did it. And in terms of cadence, no other country comes close to it. Be mindful, you take SpaceX, put every other space agency together the cadence is still SpaceX so in that reality where we are living in right now people are risking on it simply because they have delivered it like they have done done it's like it's like risking money on Nvidia that's like yeah we already deliver and be mindful Nvidia is much more closer to AMD like Nvidia is here AMD is like you can see like you can see AMD is catching up to it again not very close nowhere near but there is a competitor there is nothing there is nothing where I can compete. There is no other company that I can say that can coming close to launching almost 200 orbital class rocket per year. And let alone uh, talking about like having heavy class rocket, meaning you can dump almost 10 ton to low earth orbit. That's the whole point. So over budget, yeah. But from people's point of view, like people who are investing, it's a high risk, high reward game. It's like com completely different investing into, let's say, ULA. That even if you pour a lot of money in ULA, ULA is going to give you a, like a moderately better rocket. Yeah, that's good and all, but it's moderately better. If this works out, it's going to be like, damn. So over budget part, while that is a serious issue, it is in contrast, like on balance, it's not that big of a deal. Now, one thing that personally bugs me like to no end is like, why there is no third stage? And this is this is genuinely shocking to me. It's like, we did not build a moon rocket in like, you know, two stage. We built two stage, Saturn V, heavy lift vehicle. Then we are like, okay, that team was one team. And then they were like, hey, we can dump a 150 ton to low Earth orbit. Go you alone it. So this was built a third stage and everything, be mindful, everything above this line, like above this line is under 150 ton, fully loaded. They had to design it that way. So Saturn V dumped 150 ton to low Earth orbit. After that, this puppy was like, I got you fam. From low Earth orbit to lunar injection burn to return uh, Earth entry injection burn, all of that was done by this. I have no idea why the heck SpaceX is not going through that simple system. And again, when I say third stage does not mean it has to be on top of a rocket. You have a payload, no problem, here's the deal. You do not have to worry about aerodynamics once you are in space. Okay, so what does that mean? That simply means you can have two launch. Let them figure just to launch you dump one launch now you have 100 uh you know 100 ton to low earth orbit okay that 100 ton is already at orbital velocity you got it okay you dump it outwards then you launch another system that has again 100 ton. what 100 tons 100 ton rocket which mind you would be more or less the same size actually bigger than this simply because this was if i'm not mistaken the things that above on this was 60 ton so this is not that um big comparatively speaking so you will have a uh, basically second module that is only propellant and rocket engines and thrusters and all that jazz and payload with human rated dock them in space done go home you will get exactly same amount of tonnage that you will get if you try to uh, reap fuel almost 16 times a freaking starship you will get exactly the same thing i genuinely have no idea why the heck they're not like thinking what if we put third stage like again, uh, the only company that is small and did this figured it out where it's like, hey, what if we actually put small third stage was the Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab actually did some very heavy missions, like comparatively like in terms of orbit, but again, their rocket is tiny. Kick stage. Once you have something in orbit and if it fires, you're going to get awesome oomph out of it. You can go geostationary. You can go to lunar injection. I have no idea that whole planet has somehow figured, forgotten about it. It's like, we have to do it in two stage. No, you have a giant payload volume. How about you utilize that giant payload volume? We have advanced so much that you are thinking, right? We can, in principle, do docking multiple times. So what about you do docking one time? You dump both of them in space. The rocket part will have the propulsion and it just goes there, docks. Exactly the same thing. It also had to do the same thing. It had to pull out the lunar module. Because for the aerodynamics, it was inverted. So they went out, flipped, pulled out. That's how it worked. It could be done. It is done, it's scientifically possible, known mathematics, I have no idea. It's just like, why you are trying to refuel second stage? It's like, it's unnecessarily wasteful. And be mindful, uh, Saturn uh, V was not a reusable rocket. So is Starship. Starship is not in a point where it's like, oh, we're gonna launch 16 times, it's not an issue. They will be lucky if they can achieve 16 reusability in day one. 
it will take years multiple launch be mindful uh, watch the progression from uh, falcon 9 reuse the first falcon 9 that landed was no, of no use they did just scrapped it apart and figured out what happened how much erosion happened how much all that things happened and it took them years like you watch their own interview they're like yeah we think we can get five reuse out of it then it became yeah i think we can push it to 10 then it reached a point where, yeah we can push it to 20 yeah they are using better fuel this time instead of rp1 they are using methane that is a cleaner better fuel and again design philosophy has improved so i do expect them but 15 launches or 16 launches on one booster on day one like this is our first thing and go yeah that's not happening and be mindful the propellant is expensive at that scale when you are talking about thousands of ton of it yeah that's expensive why are you burning we only have one planet let's not burn a hole into this planet it's genuinely frustrating it's like how the heck this happened now be mindful the best explanation humanity has at this point how the heck this stupidity is going forward is simply because there was a scam with nasa that person who approved this design uh, basically uh, approved this gave them under the table dealing and then they just left the nasa job joined into spacex this happened this is a proven data set and again that's why uh, all other companies uh, filed a lawsuit won the lawsuit and nasa had to reopen the contract because yes under the table dealing was done now it was not about money it was more of like most likely job was the uh, sweetener so to say so that's why there is a very serious risk that nobody actually sat down is like let's really think through and somebody on top made the decision and people on the bottom is like might as well work with that be mindful uh, that's why i keep saying you have to understand engineers work for money like i know it's very hard to understand but if you take a nasa's engineer rocket engineer the best they are and you're like work on space shuttle they will look at you and it's like am i getting paid for it they will say yes they will not they will not tell you this is a death trap be mindful the engineers calculations engineers not the uh, top and around engineers calculation was 200 to 1 uh, or 100 to 1 that's exactly how much damage happened with space shuttle so people do work for it it's like you have to understand people are doing their job so do you think people did not know about hyperloop being a scam they knew but they're like am i getting paid yes i don't know solar roadway am i getting paid that's it. So same thing is happening. That's why there needs to be a really thorough investigation. This design philosophy is genuinely stupid. Why? If you are only caring about 100 ton to this, oh, I have this whole second stage. It's a hassle for you. It requires extra deceleration, extra acceleration. Why are you carrying that mass? And here's the deal. If you dump that law, you get some second stage back. Economically beneficial. So I have no idea that this lack of third stage is genuinely, genuinely mind boggling to me. Third stage, we know this, we have tested this, this works. This is the part where I'm like genuinely, somebody should bitch slap them, like somebody has to. It's like, what if we refuel it? It's like, what if you dump it? You just dump the payload, dump the rocket booster, dock them, bye-bye. Two rockets, both reused, done, go home, sweet dreams. Now, let's talk about the vulnerability. Now, if Elon keeps over-promising and under-delivering and uh, delaying things, uh, there is a penalty here. Let that be very clear. Market can lose faith in him. And yes, you can see almost the early phases of that in Tesla. And more than enough people at this point in time are saying like, if you thought Tesla is going to keep going to multi-trillion, yeah, that, that, that uh, hype period is gone. Yeah, it's starting to what we call equalize. And uh, it's not good. Let's just put it that way. It's not good. And again, can that happen to SpaceX? Yes, because while you are taking money from gray market, while you have a lot more control, it's it's not infinite you cannot just keep going to nasa and it's like hey give more money it's like because be mindful people are burnt at this point in time people are break on like destroyed from inflation at this point in time government cannot just announce it's like oh we are giving uh, spacex three more billion dollars just so we can do hululu in space it's like nobody is interested anymore Pe country is not unified anymore so this sort of expenditure is not palatable for uh, basically senators because he has deal if they keep doing this it could be the final you know what we call spark if there were little Literally, people just come to the street and start to poofing uh, senators because like we are not having money for food, clothes, dentist and you are like what if we put stuff on the moon. It's like I don't want it. I don't want it. So there is a very serious risk. There's, yes, SpaceX is vulnerable. Even with all their like you know technological might that they have, they're still vulnerable. Be mindful, same thing has happened with Virgin Orbit. They did build a plane. They did build a stuff that they put in orbit. It's just like it was like eh, who needs it? 
So government has a limit and public is no longer in the mood for expensive pro space project. Nobody's interested. They're like, oh, but people are like moon and all that. Moon time, there was a sphere, Soviet Union, and mine was bigger. Who's bigger is there right now? And like China is like, people know that China does not have it. This time we, we got it. We got it. People figured it out. China does not have it. And even if China is doing that, it's like, it's a very good thing for it. It's like, yeah, keep burning your youth, Chinese youth. You need the proof. Figure out what does it mean. Let it rot movement. It's in China right now. That's why I'm saying, like, there is no true commitment. And if you are starving, you do not give a damn. It's like, plus, please sort the food part. Food is expensive in USA, like, expensive, expensive. So, government is not in that position, and they're not immune to bankruptcy. Like, you must have heard in the early days, like, you know, Starship, uh, Starlink is not pr printing money. Yeah, that is true. But here's the, uh, every delay that happens on the Starlink, it pushes mo far more stress. You know, like, aren't they making money? Yes and no. Yes, they are making it. Yes, they are positive. What positive simply means your running cost of this year has been taken care of. It does not mean you have actually paid off all the debt that you have accumulated. If it was that easy, everybody will open a company. It's a very difficult thing to pay off all the debt. It takes years to pay off the debt. And again, to do that, to reach that scale, they need Starship. Starship's first customer is Starlink. They must work together. Otherwise, they're both in serious trouble. So they're not immune to what you call basically bankruptcy. However, that being said, that's a factual thing that if they keep burning money at current rate, there could be a loss of public faith and, you know, money. Basically, if enough gray market money is starting being pulled out, yeah, you're not, there is a saying that Elon Musk said that was the most genuine thing about space industry. How do you become millionaire in space? Start with a billion dollar. That's the whole point. Basically, it's not as uh, profitable as you think. And again, many small satellite launch companies are learning the hard way. It's like, it's not that profitable. So... What does that mean? Let's say something bad happens. What does that mean? Here's the, it's not in US government's uh, uh, best interest to let it fall. It's in best interest if like, hey, SpaceX, uh, yeet Elon Musk, just have the rocket scientists, just have the infrastructure that you built, because that's genuinely awesome. Uh, do not uh, try to do Starship, make a better uh, Falcon 9 with Raptor engines, much better, like thicker. Uh, basically, if you just make it fatter, all problems solved and put a third stage, all problem solved. Like again, then at that point they can do very heavy, very uh, oomphish mission that they require for uh, from ULAs. So they can do that in uh, geostationary orbit. So from US point of view, because SD, you are talking about a country that is so in terms of like minds bigger than yours, they spent 13 billion dollar, let that clear, 13 billion dollar on an aircraft carrier while they have multiple aircraft carrier, while each aircraft carrier cost millions of dollars per day. So a country that has that sort of minds bigger than yours. And do you think like, is this, is, is they have value? Yes, dear. more value than aircraft carrier. Why? Other countries are building their aircraft carrier. Nobody is even close to SpaceX, nothing. Like nothing is even close. That's why I said like SpaceX, true advantage is their throughput. It's like, everybody's like, we're gonna do 100 launches a year. SpaceX is like, yeah, I've done that. It's like, how long? Yeah, yeah, yes. The answer is yes, we can do that as quickly. Be mindful, they are throwing second stage and that still never slowed them down. They are recovering uh, fairings because it's just efficient. So fundamentally, while they are vulnerable, uh, I could easily see if at worst comes to us, Elon Musk would be yeeted out of there. They are like, okay, shut up, no more public stunts and just make awesome rockets and increase your throughput because they have the potential. They already are at what I would say 60 to 70% done through the Raptors development. So a better Raptor, a better Falcon 9 design, done, sorted, go home. And again, what other else options they have? It's like Boeing is like, lol. So what other options US has? Like from a oomphish point of view. And they do not want to be stranded exactly how they got stranded after space shuttle disaster. So there is a very low chance that uh, SpaceX completely defeated. I could see like, you know, government is like, hey, 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 let's apply some steering wheel. And yes, that happens if you get into defense contracting, meaning defense satellites, which Elon must fight and actually won. So it's a two-way sword. So this was some few legitimate criticism that is happening with Starship project and there is counterpoints. Uh, I brought it in front of you. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst a friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, did you enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me excess appointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free and as always, thanks for watching.